Welcome everyone to American TESOL webinars presented free every Friday um, with me, Shelly Terrell. And today we're going to do simple drama strategies to engage learners. A little about my background and experience. Um, I'm an English teacher in Germany and I teach currently adults, teens, and um, young learners um, as young as two years old. <laughs> And so I use a lot of drama with each group. Um, in the past, I was part of a pantomime and mime team um, for about 10 years. I worked with high school students uh, that were troubled in uh, juvenile detention centers in Texas. So they committed some pretty bad, they did some pretty bad things. Uh, and drama was a great way to bring them out of their shell. I also used uh, puppets and was part of a puppet team for a uh, hundred or so uh, children for many years in Texas. So I have a lot of experience with drama, but you don't. Yeah, everyone, please watch out with your clicks because you're all presenters, so we can make this more interactive. <laughs> Uh, but whatever you click kind of impacts everything. So I'm going to show you some simple drama strategies and tell you why drama is uh, so great with learners. And you don't have to be experienced in drama to actually use some of the drama techniques. One reason to use drama techniques and learn some of them is because it really brings your lessons to life. This is me, and this is typically with my young learners classroom looks like in Germany. In Germany, we do something a little bit different than the States. You actually move from your classroom. It's very, very, very portable. Uh, please don't touch this. Thank you. <laughs> and so when you bring these lessons to life, you're able to make something such as, okay, since this room isn't permanently my room, it's very hard for me to decorate my room and stuff in Germany since I have to bring everything in each time that I teach. So one of the things that I like to do to use a lot of drama, bringing props, costumes, things like that, to make my room come to life because it's it's kind of difficult when you're transporting things. But I used to do it before, even without that, because bringing drama or acting or just animating your your classroom makes uh, being a teacher a lot of fun. It's so much more fun than sitting all the children in desks and rows. So it's good to, to bring that out. And there's a lot of great games that you can play. So I wanna know from you, what kind of activities that you think about when you think of drama? So what activities do you associate with the word drama? It doesn't necessarily have to be in school, but kind of your experiences. And the way that you can uh, type on this board, you can write directly on here, is if you click on the A in the right hand side, and then you just click on the board, you can choose a different color, and then you can write some of your suggestions. Make sure to change the color, because right now the color is black. <laughs> so, uh, oh, it says, it should say place. There we go. Ah. Okay, here we go. Yes, yes, real place. So feel free to type on the blackboard. <laughs> yeah, or inside the chat, guessing. Those are great ideas. Voices in the head. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Dance, yes. Skater. Yes, what will happen next? A corridor of voices, oh, I like that. Play, yeah, not only play, it's a game, story. Okay, so let me go ahead and switch to the next slide. These are some of the things we do as well. We have, for example, Role playing, which was mentioned, uh, singing, dancing, mime, puppet, digital storytelling, that's part of drama too, improv, 
which will see some improv games that I even used with the teenagers when I was working with them that they really enjoy. Props, math, uh, dress up, pretending, storytelling. Now, there's different ways that we can use this. I want to show you one character that comes into my classroom quite a bit. Uh, and this is the crocodile. That's what the kids call him, Croc the crocodile. And one thing that <laughs> uh, makes a croc really interesting is that the kids, they're very shy and they don't want to speak any English. If I tell them something, if I get angry at them or I say, okay, you need to be quiet or you need to do something, they won't listen to me, but they will listen to Croc because Croc has a funny voice and he's just, I guess, much more good looking than I am. So <laughs> one of the games that we like to play is just for an example of how you can bring drama in the classroom. It's very simple. My mother actually gave me a whole bunch of these that were uh, donated to her uh, they were going to throw them away because they got some better puppets. So I got a bunch of these, so I, I love them. So you can get some freebies, uh, usually at a thrift store or something, if you're looking for puppets. And so one of the games we like to play, if you're a young learner's teacher, is it, of English language learners, is um, Croc likes to have different feelings. Uh, he'll say, I'm happy. And the kids stand at the wall. And if he says, I'm hungry, so they say, uh, uh, croc, croc, how do you feel? Oh, oh, Mr. Croc, Mr. Croc, how do you feel? And then he says, I'm happy. And then they just stay there. And then they ask again. And then he says, I'm hungry. Um, and then they run across the room and he chases them and eats them. So it's one great way to get all of them to speak English that way. <laughs> but there are other things that you can do with digital uh, with drama, and some of the things are very, um, are things that are pedagogically sound as well. You see different things such as bringing in realia with props. So all the things that were in the previous screen are also things that we should add to our classroom. They're good teaching techniques, hands-on, modeling, collaboration, creativity, uh, cognition, they're able to bring their experiences and tie them to previous experiences. And they're able to come up with uh, the language that they, or the knowledge they've already learned with improv. They're able to actually come up with that. They have to think on their toes. And so they have to get in their uh, bank, their knowledge bank here and come up with it. So that's why I really like uh, drama activities in the language classroom or in classrooms in general. So. One way, of course, to do this is what stories that we bring to life. There are so many stories that are geared towards uh, using drama. I've seen a lot of high schools, and one of the things that they do to make Shakespeare easier is to actually have the student read it as a play. You've seen this with Romeo and Juliet. It's probably been your experience when you were in growing up and in school is a lot of times you would do reciting, you would do memorizing of lines, and you would act out some of the things in your English classes so that way you could bring the stories to life. For young learners, I like to use Judy Donaldson. We love Michael Rosen going on a bear hunt. That one's fantastic. A uh, whole family experience there. Um, oh, that's terrible, Joe. <laughs> Uh, they really should have that. I mean, even in English classrooms, it makes it makes some of the really beautiful texts really animated and meaningful to have drama with the kids, um, because a lot of times they'll see such big language that's sometimes considered archaic now, and and they won't be able to relate. Once they act it out, they modernize it, they bring it to life, then they really are able to make that connection. Another thing I like to do with young learners um, is use a mascot. We have a teddy bear mascot. His name is Teddy Bear. <laughs> uh, very clever, right? <laughs> but their English isn't so good, so Teddy Bear is a good uh, person to have. And he visits on our wiki page for my young learners through Bokies, which are animating, talking, characters that are free to get and put in your website. 
So one thing, when if you do use puppets, and I'll probably do another presentation on puppets because there's so much you can do with them. There's marionettes and different types of puppets you can make and things like that. But one thing is that you can, uh, you have to kind of, for it to work, sometimes you have to get a, a relationship built with that. So sometimes people might say, at first when I began using some of these drama techniques, kids were shy. Um, and, and I think when I first started using some of the drama techniques, I thought, oh, they're all going to get into it because it's so fun and I'm into it and I'm an animated person. But really, some shy kids, they, there are certain activities that will bring them to life. Uh, they're allowed to be creative. But it, it takes some time and builds to build trust and things like that. So some techniques you will have to just have patience and also use the skills to develop them. We won't cover it all now, but I have a wiki page. And in the wiki page, you can uh, read several um, resources for that. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and begin with the fun part of this, which are games. Uh, we're going to go see some of the games that I have in the wiki. And then we're also going to see um, an interview I have with uh, my special guest, Ken Wilson, who is really well known about using drama. And um, he's actually well known for using it. Uh, he wrote a book that has over uh, nearly 70 activities, actually, uh, that are really simple, really quick to do. You don't need any preparation. And they're really great to have in case anything goes wrong. How many of us, you come to the classroom, we have everything prepared, and then something just doesn't go right. I use technology in the classroom, and many times, the tech, not many times, but every so often, the technology just doesn't work. So what do we do? We do these improv games, and we still get a lot of learning done. <laughs> so let me go ahead and share that. That means my video might be take the video off really quick. Type in yes if you can. Sorry, I'm screen sharing. So can everyone see it? Can everyone hear me? Oh, okay, great. Okay, so here's the computer screen that I need you to see. And this is the video we are going to listen to. So I'm going to go ahead. Okay, so here we go. Hello, Carol. And I'm excited to have Ken Wilson, an international speaker, author, blogger. Can everyone hear that? Who specializes in animating your English lessons. This book, Drama and Improvisation, has over 50 lessons for language learners of all levels. And tell us a little about the English Teaching Theatre. The English Teaching Theatre started um, in a language school called International House in London in the 1970s. And it was originally designed as some kind of interactive drama activity between teachers and students, but eventually it became a stage show. Uh, with five actors on stage performing to an audience. Uh, there was lots of audience participation. And to begin with, it was just a little thing we did in London, and then we got invited to go on tour. And then the tours suddenly began to mushroom, and 
Um, some of the original teachers, like me and my colleague Doug Case and another woman called Hazel Ember, we stayed involved with the company, uh, but we started employing actors because we had these monumental tours to Africa and the Far East and Latin America, um, and we did shows to usually about three or four hundred people, but sometimes a lot more. Um, and it was sometimes quite difficult because we had these song words on cards. But the key, the, well, the, the message that came out of doing this show was that you get, you know, kids from um, some small town in Spain who uh, didn't have much uh, chance to meet English people and didn't have an awful lot of um, motivation to learn. And they thoroughly enjoyed the show because it was quite funny. It was quite interactive and funny. And teachers all over the place said it was really easy to teach their, their students after they've been to see one of our shows. And that's, for me, the, the lasting memory of it is that kids came into this show with no particular interest in the language or the show, and they left kind of with a great interest in, in finding out more about English. Yeah, the shows were very interactive with the audience. Um, well, the, the main thing was, as I say, the original idea that um, the person who founded the theatre, the principal of International House, his name was John Haycroft, he wanted some kind of interactive drama activity where students would be involved in acting things out. Um, and that's a nice idea, a drama club sort of activity. But in the end, our show was a stage show, five actors on stage, acting musicians on stage, lots of music. Audiences would sing songs, they shout out answers, and sometimes they'd come on the stage. And this was also interesting. They came on stage to play games and stuff. And we'd, we'd go out before the show into the audience to find like people who would be good on stage. And then during the show, we'd watch people and see people who were laughing a lot and things. performance of a show in English is one of the most amazing experiences that a student can have. But it's also quite amazing to come into class, to say something a bit new, to get a laugh from, from the rest of the class, and to go home and think, I did something really different in class today. And for me, the important thing about these activities is that it, it helps the teacher in the sense that the class becomes something that people enjoy coming to. And, you know, that's nice for everybody. And I always tell the teachers, I want activities to be teacher friendly because you're a teacher a lot longer than your students are students. You know, you're in this business for a long time. Okay, so now we're going to play uh, a different game. Some improv game. And so hopefully some... Hold on, I'm going to put on. Okay, so the first game we're going to play is called... Uh, is it sound better now? Okay, perfect. Okay, so the first uh, first game we're going to play is called Yes And. Okay, uh, the way you play Yes And is very simple. You get your students into pairs, um, and then student A begins with a sentence. And then student B replies Yes And, then adds some more information. Okay, so you can use a timer. I always use my iPhone timer because I always have my phone with me so <laughs> it's very practical um, and then you can end the activity then so I need a volunteer for this um, who would like to volunteer let's see let's try to get uh... you want to volunteer just go to the bottom left hand corner and click on the blue raising the hand icon 
and everybody should have a microphone and um, video. Okay, so I'm going to call people to volunteer. <laughs> um, I think, Sabra, you said you had some, uh, you had a video or something? Okay, great. Okay, so all you do is click on, um, you should have right under me, there should be a little camera icon, if you can click on that. Hello. There you are. Oh, you look so lovely. <laughs> okay, so you okay, so you start, you can start and say the sentence and then I'll say yes and I'll add to it. It can be a sentence about anything. And then when I pause, then you say yes and you add something to it. Um don't understand it quite well, but I'll try, okay? Okay, no problem. Any sentence? Any sentence. Yes. Yes, and I heard that you and your friends had a great time. You go dancing, probably, and... <laughs> Uh, yes, yesterday I went out with my friend and dancing and we went back home quite late. Yes, very late. And I heard that you had um, gotten in trouble because you hadn't done your chores at the house. <laughs> oh. Yes, yesterday I went out with my friends and I had some problems with my parents. But uh, I also heard that you've had the same problems. <laughs> yes, because, yes, I had the same problems and that was because I was one of the friends who went dancing with you. So I wasn't able to get <laughs> my chores done either. <laughs> okay, so that was for a that was for a good time when you talk. See, so it's it's a good it's it's a really good way to um, get the students talking. So uh, thank you very much. Okay, so we're gonna try another one that's very similar to this. If you're willing up to try another one. Um, oh, and the other thing about this. Are, these are good icebreakers, but you also, you don't need any type of materials for them. We didn't need anything. We just needed the students, put them together, and have them talking. So it's really great. <laughs> um, okay, so the next one is the same thing, except this one is a little bit spicier because what you do is student A makes up a rumor and student B laughs. They, they have to giggle. And well, both students giggle, and then student B adds to the rumor. So it's basically like yes and, except this time um, it's a rumor. So I guess um, I, I can begin. Uh, this one you might have to give some guidelines, um, or you can just see what the kids come up with themselves. Um, okay, so we'll go ahead and do this. Let me go ahead and make this window smaller. Okay, so uh, I'll start and then you can add this time. You can be student B. Ah, I heard. Uh, <laughs> did you hear that our teacher used to be a famous singer? Oh, yes, I've heard that. And I've also heard. Uh, okay, here we go. Okay, try not to touch the windows, please, because then it's hard for us to... Okay, here we go again. <laughs> yes, 
So our I teacher, the new parent, who is she's yeah, very famous singer, and she used to play rock and heavy metal. Yes, I heard that too. Yes, rock and heavy metal, and I heard she used to have pink hair. And she used to have lots of tattoos. <laughs> okay, see, very good. Great job. See, so that's another really good one to have with students. Um, the other th one that we can play um, is a prop. Now, this one is a little bit harder to do um, online, but... Um, what we would do is we would get a simple prop. So what is something you have around you right now? Do you have like a pin okay. around you? Yeah, like a, a pen. Yeah. Okay, great. Fantastic. So we're going to do our best. We're going to pretend it's the same pen. Okay, so the way we play this is called pass the prop. And the way you play this is you can take any prop, a pen, a broom, anything. You put students all in a circle, and then um, you have two students go, and they share the one prop. But this time, we're going to pretend it's the same prop. And student A decides what this prop is. So I've already decided what I think this prop is. It could be anything. It could be a spaceship. It could be um, a magic wand, anything. And then I can't tell you. Instead, I just act it out. And then you figure it out, and then you play along with me. Okay, so here we go. We'll try this. <laughs> um, hmm. Ding! Everything is cleaned up. Can you see how everything is clean all of a sudden? Oh, this thing is just wonderful. I just love to be able to look. I can go ding, and now. You have uh, a beautiful necklace on. Oh, great. Thank you. Um, now I will go jing, and you are dressed like a princess, too. Oh, you thank you. It's very lovely. So, now that you have cleaned everything up and you are dressed properly, you can go, go out, I think. And um, after this, you have a lovely boyfriend to go out with, too. Oh, wow. Nice. <laughs> oh. Okay, and then, so we do that for a while, but then somebody else will come in, and they will decide to tap one of us on the shoulder, and they will decide that this is something else. Okay, so... Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my husband to come over here, Steve, and then he's going to tap me on the shoulder and he's going to make this something else. Okay? So hold on one second. Okay. <laughs> Steve, okay, so I'm going to pretend with you again that this is the magic wand. And then he's going to come tap my shoulder, and he's going to pretend it's something else, and you have to guess again what it is. Okay, so here we go. Okay. So, ooh, this is a wonderful uh, tree. You have such a lovely hairdo now. It's so beautiful. Hair? <laughs> hey, hair. You have a lovely crown. Okay. Yeah, you have a lovely crown. <laughs> Great. Um. <laughs> Hello, da 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 Oh, great. Now I'm, I can sing a song, but, um, I will, you won't like it, so yeah. I'll pretend it is a mic, but I won't sing. <laughs> is it alright? 
Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, it's very good. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> and that's how we play that game, okay? <laughs> Usually he would have to tap my shoulder, so. I can count that three, but not the same area. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> No problem. Um, well, thank you so much for playing these games with me. Uh, we can end right there. Those were three simple games. <laughs> uh, let me try to make this a little bit smaller, our thing. Ah. Okay, so I can't really see the chat right now, but... <laughs> okay, here we go. Much better. Okay, did everybody see those games? They were very, very easy to do. Um, you don't need any preparation. They get the kids thinking, they get the kids talking, and they get them excited and out of their seats and moving. So these are just some of the ways that you can use drama. Um, and now I would like to invite you to share your experiences with how you use different drama games or activities such as role playing and things like this. Uh, with your classroom, or if you know any uh, icebreakers. Okay, and I would like to give you a hand. Thank you so much for uh, participating with me. That was fantastic. Bye. <laughs> Bye. And if anybody would like the mic, if you can click the little blue guy at the very, very left hand, and then just raise the hand. Um, like mine is raised right now, um, then you can go ahead and use the mic and you can speak with us or you can even go on video. <laughs> and everybody should be as a presenter now. Or does anybody have any questions that you would like to ask? Okay, that would be great. I think Tina is going to. Smaller, okay. <laughs> and if you have any more questions later, you can also, if you don't have a mic, type the question in the chat box. And the way you can find many of the games listed and see the rest of Ken's wonderful interview is by going to the wiki. And the wiki is the